the news tonight, sending out a plea for help. Our tourism workers seek assistance. Political parties once again caught out. And if you live in PRB flats, be warned as new laws are in place. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Naka. Kulubinaka. Fijian hotel workers are tonight pleading with the New Zealand and Australian governments to do the right thing and open up the borders with Fiji, just as the Tasman countries have done with each other. Countless hotel workers have had to return to their villages as they no longer have the income to sustain themselves in urban centres. Kore Tandulala reports that things are getting desperate for many who were once part of the most thriving industry. Fiji needs yeah. tourism for, uh, as it, it is our backbone. A heartfelt and emotional plea that represents most tourism industry workers who have been struggling for more than a year now to make ends meet after losing their jobs due to the global pandemic. I really plead with the Australian and the New Zealand government to uh, please uh, work with us, work with uh, Fiji. We really depend on, on uh, tourism. Most families in the tourism industry rely solely on visitors from neighboring Australia and New Zealand and many can't understand why our two neighbors have now allowed travel between themselves but not with Fiji and other Pacific Island countries which have remained COVID free for more than a year. Give us a chance. It's really difficult for us. So now we have to move to the village, back to the village. Yeah. It's our landlord keeping on uh, updating our rent. Fiji has worked hard from the start of the pandemic to take most of the boxes needed to join a travel bubble. You would have seen from the discussions from the Australians also that they, they still have Fiji in their thoughts. We understand that, uh, especially with New Zealand, they have their territories to look after also first. Uh, we understand what they're saying. The government continues to call on all eligible Fijians to register for the COVID-19 vaccine. Great Andulala, FBC News. And we now join Koroi live. Koroi, what has New Zealand and Australia's position been on our government's request? Binaka Edwin, Fiji has been pushing for a travel bubble since the idea emerged almost a year ago. Fiji is actually one of the nations, leading nations rather globally, to have successfully contained coronavirus with zero community cases. The high commissioners of both countries have given positive indications since talks of travel bubble emerged. However, the political will needed by New Zealand and Australian leaders has not been evident to date. Is this the end of any possibility for Fiji to be included in the travel bubble? The Fijian government is not given up yet, realizing the economic value of being able to receive visitors here in what has been a stagnating industry. For what we know, negotiations continue behind closed doors. Edwin. Nakakurui, Registrar of Political Parties Muhammad Sanim has confirmed that the suspension on the Freedom Alliance Party has been lifted. The party managed to rectify a breach of Section 26, Subsection 2 of the Political Parties Act by submitting its audited financial accounts. However, Lena Rees reports that the suspension of Unity Fiji and Hope Political Parties still remain as they are yet to rectify the breaches. Earlier this morning, suspension letters were issued to Freedom Alliance, Unity Fiji and Hope political parties due to their failure to comply with the Political Parties Act. We have now received the audited accounts from Freedom Alliance and therefore this afternoon the registrar will uplift the suspension since they have complied. Unity Fiji and Hope are yet to comply and their the suspension still stands. Attempts to get comments from Unity Fiji Party leader Savanada Narumbe and Hope Party leader Tupon Rodindalo have been futile. The Freedom Alliance Party managed to submit its records earlier today after facing issues with previous auditors. We have been using a certain auditor for the last seven, eight years and that auditor no longer able to provide the services and we were notified a bit later. Um, so we had to find a new one and we thought we had enough time but the new auditor informed us that he needs to review all the audits that was done in the last eight years. The Registrar of Political Parties says that Unity Fiji and Hope have both been notified to rectify the breaches within 60 days and in failing to do so, they may face deregistration. Lena Reese, FBC News. 
And Lina Reese is live with us now. Lina, with this development, have you managed to speak to the other two parties? Edwin, as we speak tonight, we have made multiple attempts to get in touch with uh, Savanava Norumbe as well as Tupon Ralindalo, the respective party representatives for Unity Fiji as well as the Hope Party. As mentioned, both parties remain suspended. FBC News has tried to get comments from Norumbe and as well as Ralindalo just to mention on the issues of their late submission of audit reports that has led to the suspension of their respective parties. We also managed to get in touch with the now suspended Unity Fiji Party Office. We were told that Narumbe was in a meeting today. Now, attempts during the day to try and speak to Narumbe were futile. Edwin. Nakalina. All tenants occupying public rental board flats will now have to sign new agreements. This comes after an audit revealed that most have been cheating the system and are also responsible for illegal activities in and around these flats. 112 tenants who've been residing for more than a decade have already been issued eviction notices. Kritika Kumar reports. Tightening its grip in a bid to counter all illegal happenings in premises that are meant to house and assist the low income earners. Uh, now it's a requirement that PRB and Housing Authority must conduct these checks with Title's office. The Housing Minister says PRB flats for too long have been transferred from one generation to another. At the end of the day, we need to look at those individuals who are on the waiting list. Otherwise, the waiting list will remain there and, and it's like a, a family property. PRB Properties Manager Maloni Daurewa says they have received several complaints regarding customer services and the tenants have also raised concerns regarding their security. Well, it's just about efficiencies and uh, to just to uh, improve on the efficiencies then, uh, in terms of our customer service. Eh? So that, that is where we are, we are more focused on it. Eh? So we are more customer based now. PRB is working closely with police to maintain peace and they intend to get live CCTV feeds from Mead Road flats direct to the police command center. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. It's a race against time for the health ministry as it tries to administer all of the currently available COVID-19 vaccines in Fiji before, the, it, before its expiry date. Minister Dr. Ifiremi Wangainabete says his ministry is accelerating the vaccination program this week. Fiji being amongst a handful of small nations using the vaccine, the minister says there is no room for wastage. Sanyan Imboila reports. <laughs> The health ministry is working as fast as it can to vaccinate Fijians over the next two weeks. We want to be able to continue to accelerate the vaccination over the next uh, uh, week to two weeks and ensure that the expiry date is actually before the 12th week. Yeah? Dr. Wanganembete says they are focusing on the overpopulated areas before moving on to rural communities. What we are targeting is the population density. So the, the population densities are actually in the towns, in the cities. So uh, 92 bar uh, corridor and also Lamito and also corridor. UNICEF Pacific representative Sheldon Yet visited the Raiwanka Health Center today and says the response from Fijians towards the vaccine is positive. People being registered for the vaccine, uh, it shows, I think, the demand for the vaccine, it shows acceptance of the vaccine, and we're really confident uh, that it will continue to, to go forward in a good way. More than 50,000 Fijians have so far registered under the Health Ministry's vaccination registration platform with 10,000 already vaccinated as of last week. The aim of the ministry is to vaccinate 650,000 Fijians to help us get back on track. Saini Animboila, FBC News. Up ahead, Ndraketi villagers go climate smart. And more their villagers in Lao lose their water tank. Welcome back. A Congo national alleged to have killed his Australian wife in a violent attack in 2019 pleaded not guilty on the first day of his murder trial today. 39-year-old Kiala Henry Lusaka, facing one count of murder, took his plea with the assistance of an interpreter in the Suva High Court. Pranita Prakash reports. 
It is alleged 44-year-old Jennifer N. Downs was violently attacked at the rented Sebi Street home in Suva on July 23, 2019. The state prosecutor said it was her home where she should have felt safe. Two days earlier, Downs had cut short her trip to the Marshall Islands and returned to Fiji to deal with marital problems. Local authorities became involved when Lusaka sent a picture of their daughter to his wife's father in Australia showing the girl with bruises. The father then contacted Fiji authorities. When police entered the house, they found the body of Jennifer N. Downs in the bedroom, face up with coins covering her eyes. As the trial proceeded, the first state witness and interviewing officer testified in court that they were threatened by Lusaka. She also said that Lusaka cooperated with the police. However, his cooperation depended on the type of questions he was asked. The trial will continue in its second day tomorrow. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Displaced Nambavatu villages in Raketi Madhuata are being trained to develop agricultural practices that also contribute to mitigating against climate change. The Climate Smart Agriculture Training comes under Live and Learn's Food Security and Sustainable Livelihood Program and focuses on addressing food security. Eleanor Turangayview has more. With climate change already having an impact on the agriculture and food security, Displaced Nambavatu villages are learning climate smart agriculture practices. Bringing out this awareness uh, and training to at the community level, uh, just for them to to take considerations of the climate change factors that is affecting, uh, you know, the agriculture. Along with the climate smart agriculture training, the villages have also been given tools to enhance the agricultural productivity. This is our first uh, phase of um, deployment where we are just providing the training and providing the tools. Uh, when the seedling is ready by the, end of the, the, by the end of this month, that is when we are going to give them the seedlings. Uh, so that, uh, you know, when the seedling comes, it's not stored, it doesn't go into waste, uh, it will go straight into the land that has already been prepared. The provision of the farming implements and the raised seedlings will help the villagers rebuild their lives after having to relocate here two months ago. I have been a farmer for about a decade now. My crops have been affected by climate change and I had lost hope. This training has given me hope and opened my eyes on how best to work my farm. Funded by the Australian government, the Climate Smart Agriculture concept will be introduced to 500 households across 13 communities in the Kaunrobe, Mbua and Madhuata. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. Attorney General A. S. Sayed Kayum has returned from a medical visit to Singapore. Upon his arrival, Sayed Kayum hit the ground running, chairing the virtual Small States Forum on Saturday. He will be spending the next two weeks in mandatory quarantine in Nandi and is due to come out on the 24th of this month. FBC News understands the Attorney General is looking forward to seeing his children after having been away from them for almost a month by the end of his quarantine period. Two days later, Sayed Kayum will be in Parliament for the April session of the House. Over 500 villages in Nassau Mode in Laos say they face daily problems in obtaining clean water after their storage tank was destroyed. For decades, the villages had relied on a concrete tank. However, it's now run its course after the two recent cyclones took their toll. Apeni Sawangai Randovu was in Laos recently and has this report. This now destroyed water tank was once a source of water storage. Now with it gone, the villagers have been issued a stern warning use water smartly. We've been lucky to have this concrete tank. Even though we have the small water tanks near our homes, this was the main one and we refill our tanks from here. The concrete tank has been there for as long as many have lived on Lau and used to keep water supply for at least six months. There's a lot of stories about the tank but until today no one knows when it was built and by who. What we will do now is fundraise to fix it. The Ministry of Rural and Maritime Development says they are looking at innovations that will address the water issues for most of the islands in Lau. The aim is to develop uh, solution papers, eh? uh, document, really document the, the critical issues, uh, make sure the statistics are there, population that are affected, what type of water solutions are best. Several other islands in Lau are faced with the same water crisis. The government and its development partners have implemented the use of distillation units to provide clean, safe drinking water extracted from seawater.
Apenas Wang Rendobo, FBC News. With their island labeled as the marijuana capital by many due to multiple raids over the years, villagers in Kandavu face a daunting task in changing public perception. Leaders of the Vanua have been meeting with police on an almost daily basis to counter the drug problem, which has been an uphill battle for some time. Kelly Vadala reports. meetings and marijuana tops the agenda every time. We've been labeled the marijuana island by people from outside and it's ruining the good reputation of many people on this island. People have stigmatized Kandavu. Ratuchona says there's more to Kandavu than the drug. We are well aware of our roles on this island and that's why we, the traditional leaders, meet nearly on a daily basis. During a presentation, police encourage the development of sporting and farming activities. It's about working together to change the perception of people outside this island. Villagers have also joined the campaign to end the drug cultivation and sale. All we want is to help the youth into forgetting what has been told. It's more, more things to do than, there's more to do than just focus on the marijuana. The Rokutui Kandavu and the Vunu are helping people develop their spiritual lives by engaging church leaders to keep people on the right track. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. The Fiji Teachers Union national elections will be held this Friday and Saturday. Supervisor of Elections Mohamed Sanim says this will be held in 22 polling stations around the country. Sanim says there was a very low turnout in the 2019 FTU national elections with 500 out of the 4,556 members turning out to vote. He adds this is part of the reason why polling has been extended over two days. Uh, polling will take place between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. on Friday. 16th of April and then between 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday, the 17th of April 2021. The Fijian Elections Office will be opening 22 polling venues around the country to cater for 4,917 union members who will be casting their votes on one of these days. Still to come, India faces disaster from COVID-19. And later in sports, Vaisal SRAV says players need to choose wisely. think outside of the box, especially when fending for their families. With current times being difficult for many due to the ripple effects of COVID-19, people are still resilient in the face of uncertainty. Felipe Nacaso has more. Instead of just waiting around and complaining, these Fijians have decided to resort to other things to earn revenue. Yeah, since we started, it has been going good. Uh, like every day, we're making something. Eh? On reduced hours from his previous employer, who later closed due to the pandemic, Ram made sure that his family's well-being is looked after during this crisis. He studied the local market and discovered that many Fijians want cheap and convenient buying. We open seven days to seven to seven and we're getting something out of nothing. Eh? Through the setup of these roadside stalls, New jobs are also created, especially when many are hunting for work. Yeah, they're saying that's good. They yeah. are still surviving. Eh? They're looking after their family. It's a hard time. No job for them. The two employees that are now working at this stall are grateful to have a stable paying job. For Molly Kimbao, one thing she shared was that when she started, she had to overcome a huge hurdle while on the job. When I started working here, I was embarrassed but then I realized that many wanted a job and they would even ask me here at the store. In a day, these stalls can make an average of around $150, which to them is something better than nothing. Felipe Naikaso, FBC News. Felipe is live with us from Nandi. Felipe, with these new businesses cropping up, what have you seen in terms of how they are faring? 
Well, Whitney, ever since the pandemic, Fijians have just been innovative in trying to make a living. Especially here in the Western Division, these small businesses have started up. Uh, just like the ones you saw earlier, many have been successful. And it's an indication that people are not just sitting back and waiting for assistance. They're actually going out and looking for something stable for their families to endure them through these hard times. And Whitney, while many may be feeling the brunt of it, what I've noticed uh, during the one year COVID hit, uh, especially here in the West, is that uh, people tend to have uh, this never give up attitude uh, in making ends meet, which uh, inspires others around them who also may be unemployed to get up and do something about it. Vinaka Felipe, a $12 million investment by Charan Jit Singh Rava, group of companies in Nakasi will create a new shopping complex as well as 250 jobs. Construction will begin by the end of next month. The three-story complex will have a supermarket on the ground floor that will be run by CJ Supermarket. The second floor will have a food court and the third floor will have 20 office spaces. Singh says this will be their third supermarket and they are ready for the competition. Uh, they want to have cheaper goods, uh, prices should be competitive. But I think the other side is that they look at the environment now. The environment has to be clean. And uh, the service, the most important thing is service. When people give money, they expect good service. So with all the combination, I think it will be quite, quite comfortable to run there as well. Here yeah, the local exchange rates are set early this morning. The Fiji dollar showed a gain against the Australian dollar and the Japanese yen, but decline against other major currencies we cover as a drop in the US dollar pulled it down. Prices on the commodities market were also declining today. The price of crude oil dropped a few cents, but remains high at over $59 a barrel. Gold prices were down at $1,740 per ounce, and silver dropped slightly as to $25.20 an ounce. Time for Sanifa from HFC Bank to join us now with the latest from the money markets. Good evening. A quick update of the South Pacific Stock Exchange for last week. About 15,500 shares were traded in 13 transactions valued at around $41,600. Following these trades, the market capitalization for the week recorded a slight increase of 0.03%, closing at $3.28 billion. In international exchange, despite an overall upswing, the American dollar hung near two and a half week lows against major peers today as a decline in treasury yields restrained the U.S. currency. This comes amid the long-term recovery of the greenback and U.S. Federal Reserve Chair Powell's recent encouraging comments. Meanwhile, the downbeat market mood around the Australian dollar remains as COVID vaccine delays also weigh in on the Aussie. That's all from HFC Bank for now. Vinaka. The new extra supermarket in Lozala Beach, Nasinu, should be opening its doors by the middle of the year. Construction continues at the site with the supermarket owners saying their third outlet will provide employment for over 70 Fijians. They say it's time local businesses should invest whenever and wherever possible to assist in the rebuilding of our economy, which has been drastically affected by COVID-19. The work done by government in providing the vaccine for Fijians has also been welcomed. As Extra says, people will be able to help stimulate the economy more safely. That is the latest from my end, but coming up in our new Look Climate Change segment, is this the start of the end of our Deed of Session site due to climate change? Stay with us as we tell you more after the break. Welcome back. A portion of the site where the deed of session was signed in Levuka is slowly eroding as a direct consequence of rising sea levels and recurring storm surges. FBC News visited the World Heritage Site and noted that more attention is needed to protect it from the impact of climate change. All this is attributed to the ever-growing problem of climate change. Josiah Nanunga files this story.
The authentic outlook of the session site is slowly eroding, the rising water level not even sparing a piece of history and leaving behind a bleached white skeleton. With the impact of climate change, I think more funding is required to execute activities that will sustain the authentic outlook of various historical sites here in Levuka. Levuka Town Council Chief Executive Chosese Rakwita says the visible scars at the site is a testament that climate change and rising waters are surely making an impact that small nations like Fiji are falling prey to. We really depend on uh, government and another NGOs, yeah, mm. for that matter, in terms of looking after this uh, infrastructure. In a bid to receive sufficient funding, the council is collaborating with relevant authorities to protect various sites, such as these 199 steps for tourist attraction when borders are open. There are a lot of colonial homes on Levuka's hillsides, and the romantically named 199 steps are worth climbing for a fantastic view. This historical landscape has also attracted tourists for decades, boosting economic activity on the island. Chosei Nunga. FBC News. Passion overcomes all odds, and the love for inventing creative things has been a driving force for one of the youngest entrepreneurs in Fiji, Gloria Saukuru. The nine-year-old who aspires to become a businesswoman found her interest in creativity and entrepreneurship while being a student and is truly an inspiration to others. Jeshulal with the story. Little Gloria Saukuru found her greatest inspiration from her grandmother. As my grandmother started selling, I, um, she inspired me to make my earrings. So later on in life, I want to become a better business lady. The Year 5 student of St. Anne's Primary School has also proven to be a source of income for her family, who have also been her greatest motivators. So I'm here help supporting my niece. She's uh, selling scrunchies, necklaces and earrings. I am really proud of her being her aunt and she's younger than me but she's able to sew, sew and be, she's really talented. So yeah, I'm really proud of her and I'm just here supporting. Gloria's advice to her peers is to venture the talent within and become an artist of their own. The scrunchies are made out of uh, fabric and my grandmother taught me how to sew. So I sew it by myself. And for the earring, we bought the beads and then the hanging things and then we made them. Gloria has been a role model to her very own colleagues and she hopes she can prove all odds to become a successful business tycoon in the future. Jeshulal, FBC News. As you heard earlier, the Elections Office has taken action against three political parties for compliance. Since then, while one has rectified the wrongs, senior journalist Lina Ree spoke to Registrar of Political Parties, Muhammad Saneem. reports of political parties, Mr. Sinim, is this required to be submitted to the Fijian Elections Office annually? Uh, the, the submission of uh, audited accounts of political parties is an annual requirement in the Political Parties Act. The, is, is there a deadline for yes. when they need to be submitted every year? The Political Parties Act requires the accounts to be submitted within three months of the end of financial year, which is 31 December. If the audited reports are not submitted, how does this affect the political parties leading up to the elections? If they do not comply with the law, uh, then the registrar will initiate the deregistration process. Uh, firstly, in the deregistration process, the parties have 60 days within which they have to rectify the breaches and comply. And if they fail to do so, then the registrar asks them to show cause why they should not be deregistered. You mentioned that the parties are suspended for 30 days, however they have 60 days to rectify the breach. Uh, could you expound on this a little bit more? Uh, if they are found to be in breach of the law, uh, they have 60 days within which to remedy the, the breach. The registrar in this case has given them the 60 days, but they are only suspended for 30. And at the end of the 30 day period, we will evaluate whether there is a need to continue the suspension or uh, the party uh, can be unsuspended and uh, still continue to remedy the breach. What are other aspects uh, that political parties need to be aware of in order to remain compliant and avoid suspension or worse deregistration now that elections are a year away? 
political parties uh, are creatures of statute, uh, pretty much like a company or a private business. And uh, in all circumstances, as an institution, they must comply with all the laws that govern them. And now we join Jamie for the latest in sports. Good luck, Edwin, and good evening ahead in sports. Timely advice from the maestro. And commission pushes for increased capacity allocation. This and more coming up. World Rugby Hall of Famer Wai Celeste Revi is back home in Fiji on a family trip. In an exclusive interview with FBC Sports, the two-time Melrose Cup winner and international seven superstar shares a few pointers for aspiring and current rugby players. Akula Dama has more. It's a game worthy. The maestro played for Fiji for almost two decades in both sevens and fifteens. He believes many players are falling short because they don't challenge themselves. When you finish a day, you look back the 24 hours and then you have to figure out what was the good investment I did my time. A lot of th uh, players, rugby players, they don't do that. They don't train harder. They, then they tend to think that playing well last week will make me play well. No, they, people are really looking for you. Not knowing where to draw the line in their social lives may be one of the reasons Serevi thinks many players are not going far in their careers. Maybe they don't have the right people uh, supporting them to try and uh, uh, encourage them that you should go and train. But there's a problem because when you don't surround uh, yourselves with the right people, you might end up uh, at the wrong place. Serevi made his debut in 1989 and played in four Sevens World Cups, three Rugby World Cup and Commonwealth Games in a colorful 17-year career. Akui Lavama, FBC Sports. Naita Siri blooded some new players in round one of the Skipper Provincial Cup on the weekend. For some, it was their first experience, including the health minister's son, Filimoni Wangai Nembete, who returns to the local scene after stints in New Zealand's ITM Cup and the Japanese Top League. Meanwhile, Naita Siri head coach Dr. Eli Tia Tuise Se says creating depth in his squad is a constant challenge. People are leaving every year, and it's just a challenge for us, the coaching staff, to keep breeding those players and exposing them to this level of competition. So I take my hat for them. And, uh, we're grateful that uh, World Rugby has been able to boost our uh, Super Rugby camp, uh, for Fiji. So um, if that opportunity comes, then it'll come. But uh, as for now, uh, we have for Nata Series. The Fiji National Sports Commission hopes for an increase to the number of people allowed at outdoor sporting events from 50 to 80 percent. The commission has put forward a proposal to Fiji's COVID-19 Risk Mitigation Task Force and is awaiting feedback. Caroline Itabi reports. The Fiji National Sports Commission has clarified that its request is not only for the Fiji finals. It's one of the reasons we were asking was we have had a hard time in controlling crowds to major events, especially uh, rugby and football events. With major tournaments kicking off, including schools, athletics and rugby league, along with the Skipper Cup, the Commission found it befitting to have the number increased. We still have to realise that the protection of people is the most important thing we have, and there's no way that I would sort of push the issue. It, the COVID task force didn't recommend it at this time. For Athletics Fiji, getting the green light will not only benefit the association, but will also be a morale booster for athletes participating in next week's Coke Games. Facing the capacity, sitting capacity during the Coca-Cola Games would be, you know, it would be a much boost to the athletes themselves. Other outdoor venues like the ANZ Stadium have a seating capacity of 19,000. But with the restrictions in place, they're only able to house 9,000 people. Carly Ritavi, FBC Sports. Navo's 11-year winless drought against one of the toughest opponents in Fijian football circles is over. A 1-0 win over Mba yesterday in the Digital Premier League, ending the drought and improving its chances of staying in the top division. Tali Matarukura reports. 
The experience of veteran Apisai Smith proved the difference for Navua as he tamed Mba on the artificial turf. Yeah, there was a lot of pressure on us after losing uh, some uh, games. Eh? And then uh, we have beaten uh, Ba in the National League after 11 years. The men in black struggled with injuries to its key players, which has been attributed to the shock results. Malakati was not playing there. Pranil Naidu was not there. Chese was not there. Basically, we had to uh, put uh, some midfielders into defence. While Mba promises to return stronger this weekend against Rewa, Nabua hopes to be consistent when they host Nandi. We have to cut down on the fouls. Keeping position, I think, is the key factor that we need to keep uh, and uh, having confidence. We really needed it because we are, uh, you know, the bottom of the table, eh? and we really needed that win eh? to uh, move up and uh, keep the spirit of the high, uh, boys high. Navua is in a battle with Nandronga at the foot of the table, but the Southerners say they want to also be able to provide a challenge to other teams in the DPL. Tali Materukula, FBC Sports. Nandraga has always been known for producing some of the best rugby players in the country. Now it seems they've unearthed another star in Panapasa Ngerungeru, who scored two tries in the dying minutes of their 25-17 win over Suva in the opening round of the Skipper Provincial Cup. The first of the two is our play of the day. Big for Panapasa Ngerungeru. Little show of the ball. Oh, he's managed to break the tackle. Ngerungeru goes through. Ngerungeru runs away. He will score a wonderful try. Wow! That's about 55 meters. He broke away from Setariki Raomba. Straight through the gap. A show of the ball. And then put the foot on that accelerator. In the corner. The beautiful dive. Wow! That's it from Sports Tonight. Up ahead, a Superman comic that sold for over 6 million Fijian dollars. But right after the break, Angie joins you with weather. This and more coming up. A big hello to you and welcome to the weather world. Hope you had a wonderful time with fantastic weather over the weekend. That great conditions continued into today, giving us the opportunity to do all the things we could do on a sunny day. Now let's check out other places in the country. The West had beautiful spells, the kind where you would be definitely be at the beach having a good time, but it's a Monday. But who says you can't have fun on a Monday? Eastwards from Pak Harbour to Suva, nice warm sunshine for us to enjoy. There are a few odd showers in the forecast, but that's likely to change. And up north, it was a lucky one for farmers to get on with their farming without shower interruption. The town or city we picked today is Suva, Nandi and Lambasa. The temperature was in 30s, but it felt like 37 degrees in Nandi. What a hot one. Our friend Billy was quite hot too in the corner here. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate seas. Turning to the tides, low tide at 12.09 a.m. with high tide at 6.40 a.m. Sunrise at 6.19. For tomorrow, more great spells our way. Thankful to the sunshine for sticking around. And looking further on to Wednesday, fine spells to prevail, so make your plans accordingly. Now on to our shot of the day. It is of a unique sighting captured by Pawan Singh of Dawai Levu. It's a rare fire rainbow caused by the reflection of sunlight. Remember to send us pictures with a small description to our FBC News Facebook page. And that's all from the weather world. After Fijian Pulse, Edwin will tell all Superman fans something super. Stay tuned. Thank you, Angie. In Fijian Pulse, we ask, what do you think should be done to students who continue to bully in schools? I think the senior boys should be looking after the younger students to stop bullying. Everything starts from home and I believe it's the parents who should teach kids about bullying. I think they should be expelled for not school. And I think students uh, that bully in school should be counseled immediately so that uh, the victim doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't suffer. 
from it. And recapping our main stories, Fijian workers want to be part of bubble. Political parties once again caught out and Vaisal Esarevi says players must follow right people. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM to our poll question. Last week we asked, should COVID-19 vaccinations be made compulsory? 54% of those who voted said yes. And this week we are asking, is bullying an issue that needs to be reported to police? Visit our FPC News website to answer. And you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos, email fpcnews at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You can also download our app to keep updated with the very latest in news and sports. That's your news this evening. I'll be back again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Mode